I'm going to show you the third of the three fundamental constructs of high-level programming, namely iteration. Iteration means executing a block of code repeatedly. Iteration is also known as looping, and there are two ways you can do this in VB.NET. One of them is with a for loop, and the other is with a do loop. In this video, I'm going to focus on the for loop. I've already created a new Windows Forms application, and I've placed a button on the form. So let's get right into the code. To make something execute repeatedly, I need a way to count the number of repetitions. I need a way to count the number of iterations. So I'm going to declare a variable of type integer. It doesn't really matter what I call the variable. I've called it I count because I'm going to count my way through a loop. The for loop looks like this. Any code that I write between for and next will execute repeatedly. In this case, five times, because I'm counting from one to five. Let's begin with a simple message. Give it a try. Hello once, twice, three times, four times, five times. Now that was a single line of code, but let's put a couple more inside the loop. Try it again. Hello. How are you? Well, I hope. Once. Hello. How are you? Well, I hope. Twice. So, these three lines of code are executing in sequence five times. Let's take it back down to one line for now. I can display the value of I count as part of the message, like this. Hello one, hello two, three, four, five. Let's do something a little more interesting. My program will beep every time we pass through the loop. The beep command is very straightforward. Threading.thread.sleep means pause for three seconds. Something nice about a looping construct such as the for loop is I can change the number of iterations as easily as this. The code inside the loop will now execute 50 times. I can also change the step value like this. So I'm going to count up from 1 to 50, 5 at a time. Perhaps it makes more sense to count from zero. I can also count backwards. In this case, I'm counting from 50 to zero and I'm stepping minus five at a time. If I want to display the output in a single message box rather than separate message boxes, I could do something like this. Inside the loop, I'm not doing any output. I'm simply building the output string. I'm saying let st out equal whatever it used to be and then something else. In this case, the value of i count along with a new line operator. This time, I only have one message box outside of the loop. And that's quite a common technique. 
So there it is, the for loop. In the next video, we'll look at the do loop. And then following that, you'll see how the looping constructs really come into their own when working with array variables.